Children have a will of their own. Leaking gases can be a problem when giving a child anesthesia. But this is no problem when using the double mask. A few simple rules will help you to feel at ease when working with the double mask. First of all, when you connect the system to the anaesthetic apparatus, the flow meter following the evacuation tube should go parallel to the anaesthetic tubing so that all the tubes come from the same place towards the patient. The connecting device fits onto any anaesthetic system meeting the ISO standard a Bain system, a circle system, or a non-rebreathing respirator. When choosing a mask, it is advisable to have both a larger and a smaller size available in case there is a need to change them during the course of giving the anaesthetic. The mask itself consists of a semi-hard outer mask and a soft inner mask. The soft inner mask has a lip that is even softer and that follows the contour of the patient's face very well. Between the inner and the outer sections of the mask there is a space where suction takes place. This is where the leaking anaesthetic gases are sucked up from the patient's respiratory system and into the double mask's system. At the bottom of the mask there is a disc that spreads the anaesthetic gases so that they mix well inside the mask. As the anaesthetic gases are invisible, we are going to use water vapor in order to show how the double mask functions. So what you see coming out of the anaesthetic tubing here is water vapor. When this is connected to a traditional mask without any scavenging system for the gases, this is what you can see. Normally, you wouldn't see the anaesthetic gases. Using the double mask, the gases are scavenged through the space between the inner and the outer sections of the mask. You can also see clearly that the mixture of anaesthetic gases and oxygen remains in the mask, in this way, the patient is constantly getting the correct mixture that the anaesthetic apparatus is adjusted to give. Only the gases leaking over the edge of the inner mask are scavenged. You can even move the mask about without the gases leaking out into the operating theatre. The system becomes a complete unit when connecting the mask to the connecting device. The tube holder is another important part of the system. There are a variety of tube holders, but the important thing is to relieve the uneven weight distribution that can arise when the tubes come from the same place. Not that the tubes are heavy, but they function better if they are well balanced against each other. If you turn the connecting device at an angle to the anaesthetic system in such a way that the whole unit is well balanced, then it will more or less stay on the patient's face without any help. Another advantage of the double mask is this. Instead of pushing the mask against the face of the patient as you would normally do with a traditional mask, you only need to use two fingers to hold the double mask in place. This enables you to be able to use the other parts of your hands to keep the patient's airway open. If you need to move the patient's head during the course of the operation, you can move the tubes in another direction with the help of the tube holder. If it is necessary to change the means of giving the anaesthetic from mask anaesthesia to intubation anaesthesia, then it is possible to connect the double mask's evacuation system directly to the tubing, 
This could especially be useful in cases where you do not have a cuff tube. If the position of the system is inconvenient for a particular operation, it is possible to put the connecting device at the corner of the patient's mouth. If the operating theatre does not have its own scavenging system for its anaesthetic gases, or if you wish to lower the noise level in the theatre, it is possible to integrate a separate scavenging system for scavenged gases into the double mask. This is mounted between the flow meter and the thicker evacuation tube. Like this. And when the double mask's scavenging function is working, the indicator on the flow meter to the scavenging system for excess gases will show that we have at least the 25 liters flow per minute which is necessary for scavenging these gases. A patient can breathe out anaesthetic gases for some time after an operation. A special chin mask helps to scavenge the gases and keep the environment clean in the post-operative ward. The chin mask works even if the patient turns his head restlessly. Hopefully the double mask with its evacuation system will play an important role in ambulances in the future. Up until now, gases have been evacuated from the closed cab through the windows and the sunroof. Denmark has already equipped its approximately 700 ambulances with the double mask, making journeys safer for both patients and personnel. In the case of dental operations using gas, the double mask has another construction. It is a nose mask that evacuates leaking gas from the area between the inner mask and the outer mask. It is also possible to supplement this with a chin mask to evacuate gases that are exhaled. Personnel at veterinary hospitals, as well as our four-footed friends, also benefit from advances made with the double mask. Veterinarians operate using this solution to evacuate leaking gases when putting the animals to sleep.